Aloha, everyone, and welcome. My name is Bev Parker, and I'm an AARP Hawaii volunteer. Tonight's Fast, Healthy, and Ono cooking demo will focus on learning about pressure cookers as we make Kalua pork and chicken long rice. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry already. It sounds so good. On behalf of our sponsors, Uala Leaf Cafe at Windward Community College, Kalnoa Senior Services on Maui, and AARP Hawaii, thank you so much for tuning in this evening. If you're unfamiliar with AARP Hawaii, we are a membership organization. Our members are 50 years of age and older. However, what we do, we do for everyone. And we do hope this series will help you learn techniques to build or maintain a healthy lifestyle. A quick review of our uh, Zoom controls for today. So we have uh, muted everyone on entry. So uh, we'll just be taking questions for the chef through the Q&A button that you'll find at the bottom of your screen. If you have an iPad or a tablet, the Q&A button may be at the top of your screen. Uh, also, if you are on Facebook, we would ask that you ask your questions in the comment section of Facebook. The chat button is available for technical problems. So if you have a technical problem, please use the chat button and uh, one of our staff will be sure to get back to you about that. Um, what else do I want to mention to you? Also, uh, you may notice something different today We're going along the bottom of your screen, and that's what we have called closed caption. So if you prefer to not use the closed caption feature, which I think everybody's going to be seeing right now, just go to the bottom of your screen. If you are on a regular computer or a, a laptop or go top of your screen, if you have the um, iPad or a tablet and you'll see something that says closed caption, then you'll see live transcript, click on that and hide subtitle. So if you do not want to see the closed caption, click on live transcript, click on hide subtitles and then that should come off your screen, okay? The other thing is we've got Chef Dan um, using the two cameras again, the two camera angles, which are just great. We know that sometimes it's kind of hard to see one when you see the other. So you'll see uh, kind of in the middle of your screen when Chef Dan comes on uh, a bar. And so just put your mouse on that bar, click on your left uh, clicker on your mouse and you can drag that box to make one screen larger than the other, or preferably to make them both the same size. And I think you'll get the best um, experience if you do it that way. The other thing I'd like to mention is the recipes uh, were attached uh, to the registration confirmation you would have received from AARP. So when you come to these classes, please just be sure to double check your registration confirmation because there should be a link on there and that gives you it's to a pdf file and that would give you your recipes okay so hopefully uh you got them if you can just go back and you can look for that so you probably heard more than enough from me so i'll just say without further ado i i'm so pleased to uh welcome back uh chef dan swift again as he's leading us through this cooking series over to you chef all right thanks bev um we're getting so high tech <laughs> And fancy, it's nice. Uh, thank you for adding the closed caption. That's very helpful. Um, yeah, it's nice to be back. I sort of had last week off. Well, I wasn't off. You might have seen my hands uh, sneaking in. Chef Dale Thomas was here. Uh, but it's great to be back this week. And we do, we get a lot of requests about cooking with uh, pressure cookers or the different brands of pressure cookers that exist. Uh, can you do that in an Instapot or whatever? Uh, so we, we decided to kind of approach uh, some classic dishes that we all know and we all love from our time in Hawaii and um, potlucks and luau's and things like that. So uh, the recipes did go out. There are a few things that I'll go over as we produce these um, and kind of wanted to go over a little bit about, of course, the I've always got my learning outcomes that we want to talk about, um, but also the, I guess, the evolution of the, the pressure cooker. Uh, we don't really use the traditional twist handle lock type anymore. You can still find them, but uh, they're not that common. Most of them are now digital and a little bit more high tech, a little bit more automated. Um, but I have, you know, over here, actually, earlier, I started just a, a side of cabbage in a, an old Sunbeam 
crock pot, right? Which is basically what this is. This has a high and low setting. This particular one has multiple settings uh, up to about 300 degrees, and then it sort of becomes a fryer. So you can actually set it on uh, up to about 370. So you can use it as a fryer. Um, I don't use it for that. I don't know that you would need to do that at home, but um, the tools are available. Now they make the separate digital fryers, uh, or you could use some of the other uh, digital pressure cookers for that sort of thing. Uh, they don't have to be large. Uh, the earliest evolution, you can see the orange and blue uh, enamel coated uh, Le Creuset pots that I use in the kitchen, just like the old cast iron style. These happen to be uh, over there coated in enamel. So low and slow works great for those uh, longer cooking time. Uh, these tools will save us time in the kitchen in terms of uh, the amount of time necessary to cook it. Um, it's kind of surprising to see, like this is like the smallest one that I've ever seen. Uh, they're used a lot of times for melting wax or doing uh, aromas in the house. Potpourri in there with a little bit of water can really uh, freshen the air or whatnot, but I've actually used them to cook things in and uh, they work really well. It's obviously one serving, but uh, they range in size from the really tiny, like three cup one on up to the much larger ones. This is probably about two gallons, I believe. And we use this for soup uh, here in the cafe. Pardon so me, Chef. Yeah, Do you have ahead. your other camera available, your overhead camera? Yeah, I can switch it. So we could do the uh, side by side. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I, I put my mouse away, my share screen. Are they both up now? They are. And just a reminder to everybody, you can see okay. that bar kind of in the center of the screen, just slide it over until you get both pictures the same size and then it's perfect. Thanks a lot. Sorry for okay, the interruption. Great. So you can see both. All right. Yes. I'm going to retire my mouse. I'll put it up here uh, so that we can work forward from here. Um, so, you know, it's, it's up to you, uh, the advantages, like I said, and we'll go through our, our time savings when you're working with the pressure cooker, cooks things a little bit faster. Um, but I did want to point out, and if you've watched our series, you know, we always try to focus on an, an element or a component or uh, some theoretical aspect of cooking that can really elevate your uh, skills in the kitchen and the quality of the products that you produce if you understand uh, the theoretical approach to what we're talking about. So. Uh, we've talked about this before in a couple of dishes that we've made, but low and slow is what makes things tender. So when we're dealing with thigh meat of chicken or if we're or bone in uh, legs or any tough cut of meat or the pork shoulder in this case, a uh, low and slow temperature will make it tender. Also the moist heat, the moist heat method, having moisture in there as it's cooked will also make it tender. And slow cookers and pressure will make things tender as well, they'll cook it quicker, but um, the temperatures are a little bit higher. So uh, that does have an impact on the, the end texture. With Kahlua pork, it doesn't really matter. And chicken long rice, there's so much broth involved, but for items that are not served in a sauce or with a broth, uh, it can make them a little bit on the more dry side. So lower and slower for a long period of time uh, results in a better product. Uh, but tonight we want to focus sort of on the time-saving aspect of it. So uh, feel free to ask questions anytime. I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're doing three items tonight. We're doing the quick poi, uh, the cool pork, and then the chicken long rice. So uh, I'll start with uh, the quick poi. And I hope you guys have seen, or, or you know, obviously you can buy the bag poi already done uh, in the store. Uh, we use a lot of the powdered poi, it's 100% dehydrated, uh, cooked uh, kalo or taro. Uh, it can be rehydrated like we're going to here. Um, it can be used in a lot of other ways. I use it in, as a substitution for flour and some bread that I make. I make a taro bread with Maui onions uh, and about 30% of this is replacing flour. Uh, it's a little on the pricey side, but it makes an incredibly delicious uh, bread. And what I have here in the pan is just some water that I brought to a boil. It's actually reduced a little bit. I'll put a little bit more in there because we want to have a decent sized batch when we're done. And the directions are on there. You're simply stirring in the, the poi powder and you just have to cook it for about a minute or two. Adjust the thickness the way you want it adjust the salt or the sugar content the way you want it. I usually don't add salt, I'll add a little bit of sugar. 
but you can see how that tightens up really, really quick. Chef, where can you purchase poi powder? Uh, Times carries it. That's where we picked it up last night. Uh, Safeway also. And it's locally produced, so you can find it sort of uh, most of your supermarkets. Uh, you can even buy it online. So I'm going to add a little more water because I want to make a bigger batch. I'm trying to fill the smaller bowl uh, over here. And it depends on how thick you like it. I, I I like a you know a one finger style poi, so it works for me. And a little bit of sugar. I don't like it super sweet. Some people like it a little bit more sweet. Just gonna add a little bit. And then I can reduce the heat and let this sort of simmer just on the pilot light over here. Check the it's such a great product and so convenient. So if you have friends that have moved away and they miss eating poi, this is a great thing to send them. And they can just rehydrate it, cook it themselves. And they've got great poi at home. You can leave it out if you want it to sour a little bit uh, to get that more um, traditional flavor. But look at that. I mean, that's just perfect consistency. Uh, once it cools, it'll be a little bit thicker. It'll exactly what I'm looking for here tonight. Chef Dan, um, Don is asking the brand name of the poi that you're using. Do you have a preferred brand? Uh, only Taro brand is the one that I'm aware of, honestly, uh, that makes it. Um, there may be others out there, but I'm, as far as a broader access product, this is the one that we, we utilize. The only one that I've seen. Uh, the recipe says it's in a jar. It used to be in a jar. This is the first time I've seen it in the packet. They may still do it in jars. I'm not really sure, but this is about um, three ounces. This was three to four ounces, uh, about eight dollars, seven, eight dollars, depending on where you buy it. But uh, depending on the hydration, you can get quite a bit. And then the next one, and if you watched the class last week, you saw pork loin, uh, which was an extremely lean, lean cut of meat with hardly any fat on it, um, almost no intermuscular fat. But and with the pork shoulder, you can see there's a lot more fat running through it. So um, if you're interested in reducing the amount of fat in your final product, you can trim the outer fat off if you wish. Uh, you can see here, there's a nice cap of fat. A lot of times people like to leave that in for flavor. Uh, it gets broken up and shredded at the end, but uh, if you do want to remove it, you certainly can. It's not a problem at all. Uh, and then I've got uh, my liquid smoke. I've got my minced garlic. And then today I made uh, 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 some seasoned salt. This is a new one, actually. We do a lot of salts here and rubs, uh, but I, I took our, our Hawaiian salt and our kuneki and our, uh, our kuneki and our uh, mamaki herb blend and mixed it together with some of the liquid smoke so that it got sort of wet and then I dried it out and we ended up with this nice kind of dried smoked salt that we were going to use this evening so uh, it's not um it's not available right now but hopefully in the fall we'll be able to produce this and make sure that it's available to everyone Good. and are you purchasing the um the smoke at times as well or do you get that yeah most supermarkets will have it don't buy a gallon a gallon will last uh, for us probably in a restaurant setting, uh, you know, up to six months, three to six months. If you're finding it in the supermarket, it'll probably be in a quart uh, bottle, very similar to this. This is a hickory. Uh, and there's lots of different brands, but you can find this at most supermarkets. And then we're just coating the uh, pork with the salt. And a lot of people have different techniques here where they'll take garlic cloves, they may poke it like a, a roast for, um, for lamb where they're adding garlic, whole garlic cloves inside. Uh, some people rub the liquid smoke on the meat, they'll wrap it in the tea leaves and then wrap it in foil and roast it slowly in the oven. So there's lots of different ways to do it. You don't end up with as much broth you just get the drippings. But um, for this particular method, we're just gonna use the pot, um, some water, 
and the liquid smoke and garlic and the salt. If I can just back up a little bit, Marilyn wants to know, is the poi powder cheaper than the fresh? Uh, let's see, it was like $8, seven, $8 for a, a bag, which I didn't catch the weight on it. I think it's a pound. Um, this uh, three ounce one, depending on the thickness that you would make it, might be just slightly more expensive, but it just, it depends on how much water you're adding to it. So you, you could also thin out the one that you purchased already cooked, but it's, it's kind of up to you and the way you like it. And so they're, and they're one close. One, sorry, one last one for now about the liquid smoke. Um, Ingrid was saying that um, her husband had mentioned that it's not very healthy. Uh, what's your thought on this? As far as the health benefits? Or no, that it's not very healthy. Yeah, yeah. You will see that. Um, I mean, we're using such a small amount here and we're not using it all of the time. I mean, I probably eat Kahlua pig maybe, uh, maybe once a month. Um, so by the time that two tablespoons gets distributed amongst uh, eight to 10 people uh, once a month, um, yeah, it's like butter, uh, limited quantities and uh, moderation uh, would work. But it's similar to like charring a steak on a grill, right? The char is not that good for us. And if you're trying to avoid that, uh, maybe coming off of uh, an illness and like cancer or something, you might not want to have the liquid smoke, so. And then I'm just adding the water. And that was about uh, a quart. And then I got the tea leaves outside. Uh, we have them growing all over campus, just wash them down. I, I cut one off. Uh, from out back and then we, we save the stems or the stalks, we root them and then replant them. So uh, I only need about four here. If you're doing it in the oven or wrapping it in foil, you would wrap it first with tea leaves or banana leaves and then uh, put it in. So I'm gonna lay that across the top. If you don't have access to tea leaves, then you can also uh, use cabbage. A lot of times I'll just grab a cabbage leaf if I don't have one handy. Uh, here at Windward, it's not a problem. And then we put the lid on and then this will cook uh, under pressure for about 90 minutes. And it comes out nice and tender. And I have one here ready that I'll show you uh, at the end. I just want to jump into the chicken uh, long rice really quick so that we can get both of those sort of going. Any other questions at the moment? Uh, yes, Clarita was wondering, is that a gas stove you're using? Uh, the one here is yes. gas. The one that I had with the little Iwatani burner, which is a butane gas stove as well, the portable one. So yeah, we only use gas here. Right on. And Marianne has a question. We might be jumping a little bit ahead on this one, but is there any way to prevent the noodles from absorbing all the broth, making the dish dry in the chicken long rice? That's an awesome question. Uh, <laughs> pasta and rice constantly, you know, all of our carbs tend to constantly absorb moisture. So you really have that small window to where it's perfect. And we'll see that tonight. Mine's boiling uh, the batch that I made earlier so that we can see it. I may have to add a little more water to it or a little more stock to it, um, but you just have to monitor it. And then you'd have to, if it absorbs at all, you have to add more stock back to it. So once the noodles go in, they're just going to soak it up like a sponge. Uh, and it's really difficult to, you can't really stop that, especially if it's hot, it'll just continue absorbing. And I just put in the salt or the salt-free stock. Uh, I picked up a uh, uh, sodium-free stock base yesterday at the store. This was a little expensive. It wasn't that much. I mean, it was like four bucks, I think, um, but zero sodium. Uh, you can also buy the cans of low sodium that works as well, uh, but there's no salt at all in this. So if you're watching that, you can find that in the supermarket. Uh, you'll see a lot of times here we use also the uh, better than bouillon, but it's not low in sodium. So you do have to watch that. They make a bunch of different flavors in this uh, and it's about $7. This is a little expensive, but it will last quite a long time. Just watch the amount of base that you use if you're, if you're counting your sodium content. So in went the garlic, in went the salt-free stock. I've got my sliced ginger and I've got my chicken. So I'm just gonna slide my chicken in there as well. And 
And then this would be started on pressure. And it, depending on the cooker you have, you could go lower pressure with this, but the chicken thighs, which is what I'm using here, um, they're only gonna take about 10 minutes. Uh, they cook pretty quickly. If you're using chicken breast and looking for a leaner cut, probably about the same amount of time, maybe a little bit less, because remember when we're done, we're gonna shred that chicken and then throw it back into the, the simmering broth and it'll cook it a little bit more as well. So we, we have a little bit of leeway there. If we're just slightly below the perfect cooking temperature when it comes out of here to cool so we can shred it, it it's gonna get a second uh, reheat um, as soon as we throw in the noodles and, and the onions. And that's what I'm gonna do here. Uh, I've got the onions. I mean, these will be for the garnish at the end, but I've got my cut onions. And there's a couple ways to cut it actually. You can also cut it, um, well, we, we call this like the rainbow cut. So it's sort of a julienne, but the other direction on the onion. So if you want longer strips, you can certainly do that. I have it cubed. I can do either one or any cut you want, doesn't matter. Uh, we're just looking for that flavor that goes inside. And I have the lid off of this just so that I can now add back Uh, the onions and the noodles. So I've got the bean thread here that I soaked. And as long as they're soaked in hot water, they'll get nice and tender. But here they're not going to cook. We really need to bring them up to a simmer uh, to cook them. So we drain the water off and we'll add those to the pot as well. Chef Chris is asking if there is liquid smoke in the seasoned salt, do you still need to add liquid soap, uh, smoke? If there's liquid so smoke, I'm sorry. If there's, uh, if there's liquid smoke in the seasoned salt, do you still need to add the liquid smoke? That's uh, a great question. Yeah, I, um, I just made that today, so I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll be we'll find out together, with, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I'll be experimenting with it. Um, we were talking in the kitchen today and that's one of the goals. We're like, oh, we could come up with a luau or a Kahlua pork uh, salt spice blend. So, mm. so that you would not need the liquid smoke um, in, the, in the bottle form. You'd just be able to take the, the salt and use that. And that would reduce the amount as well, but hopefully translate uh, the flavor into the product So, Right. And then earlier I just pulled out the chicken. Uh, and like I said, we did thigh. Uh, Thighs tend to have a little bit more um, intermuscular fat. So you'll, you'll have a little bit more moisture in the meat itself than you will with the breast. Uh, so most of your dark meats will have uh, more fat in the, in the muscle itself. So I simply just shredded it. You may want to cube it. You may, like I said, want to use uh, chicken breast, which shreds really easily and that works well. But now we just need to add it back in. And then I wanna, wanna make sure that I, it comes to a boil so it cooks those noodles and reheats that chicken that I took out and cooled and shredded a little bit. So that'll only take a couple minutes. Uh, while that's going on, I'll bring over the pork. And this is hot, use a towel. My fingers are calloused, so I tend to grab hot things more often than I should. Uh, but you can see how it's uh, cooked up really nice. You can smell the aroma of uh, the pork and the, even the tea leaf give a fragrance um, to the dish and then the liquid smoke as well. So you may want to use the, the tea leaves for service. You can simply discard them if you don't. And then I'll usually take the pork out in a separate bowl. You'll notice it falls apart. You gotta be really careful. As I pick it up, it's, it wants, you see it wants to just fall apart when you shake it. It's not, it's not difficult to break it up. 
And I, I, I recommend you remove it first and do the shredding, and then you can add back the amount of liquid that you want, because you may not want this entire amount of liquid in there. Uh, you may also want to skim some of the fat from the top so you don't have all that fat in there. Uh, just depends on your preference. Patricia is asking that the recipe says 12 minutes natural pressure release. Does that mean release it after 12 minutes? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And each, uh, each cooker is a little different too. So uh, what, what we try to make sure that people recognize is as you're, as you're looking at recipes like this, um, most of the, if you're to buy a pressure cooker, a digitized one, you're probably gonna find recipes for that particular one or for the settings. Um, I have one here that I was using today that was a gift and it, it does everything but bake bread. Actually, I think it might even bake bread. Um, it makes cakes, it makes rice, it makes porridge, it makes... Uh, so sometimes less is more, but just make sure that you look at the guidelines for the particular unit you're using. Or if you do something like this, you just go uh, on a low setting of about 250 degrees and it'll work fine. I'm actually okay. gonna remove the lid on that. Great, and, and Jackie, do you have any uh, questions on Facebook? To see if Jackie's got any. Um, no questions on Facebook. Although okay. I will tell you a personal testimonial since I make this at least twice a year, if 90 minutes isn't enough to have it falling apart, you can just stick it in for five more minutes and it will make it perfect. So there's no harm by restarting your pressure cooker if it's not at the perfect consistency. Good to know. Awesome. Thanks. And you can see how easily it shreds, right? Some people like it really finely shredded. Others might like a couple larger chunks like that. It's totally up to you. And then once you get it shredded the way you'd like it, this is where you can come back and, and add the liquid or as much liquid as you want to soak it up. So I'm adding about a third of what I had here and I'll even kind of stir it a little bit and allow the pork to sort of rehydrate because this was at a higher temperature. Uh, most of the moisture within the meat did come out. Now it can absorb a little bit more back inside. Dan, Carla was wondering what would be the approximate cooking time of the pork if you were to use a crock pot? Uh, I would say about, you always wanna just take a fork or a knife and poke it. And I'd start checking it at about maybe two and a half hours to three hours at low at a low simmer. And you'll, you'll be able to tell once your knife goes in and out really, really easily. Um, but it depends on the size of the chunk, right? How much uh, meat you're doing. A two pound piece shouldn't take longer, about three and a half hours. And then this is ready. This can actually sit and absorb a little bit more. You would taste it, see if you need a little bit more salt. Um, see if you need more moisture. I can hear this boiling. So I can pull the, the long rice. Oh, I left one piece of chicken whole, it looks like. I think I was supposed to demonstrate how to shred that one. And, and that's about uh, where I want that. Now we've got for, uh, for this, the green onions for a garnish. You may want to throw your own favorite little garnish on the top. This is just uh, traditionally what we'll find. And as I pour this out, you'll see there's still some broth there. But in, in 30 minutes, that broth will be absorbed. So you do have to add more stock or add more water to it. Uh, I like to add a little bit of, uh, uh, we use some chili pepper shoyu here that I make. Some people like straight shoyu or you can chili pepper water even, um, whatever you like. I just put a little bit in here. If you want heat, if you really like the heat and the things that you make, you could add a chili pepper at any point uh, here, even in the pillow pork, you could add uh, chilies in there while you're cooking it in the pot and it will add a little bit of kick to it as well. So chef, I'm assuming that when you cook on low pressure in the pressure pot, you would just cook longer, is that correct? Yeah, generally speaking, um, what, what, what I can say is that we know that steam is generated at 212 degrees. 
so it'll cook. You can cook things steaming, no problem. It's been done forever. When you add the pressure, uh, the, the higher the pressure, the higher it allows the temperature to go. So they, it depends on the particular unit that you're using, but you're able to come back and shorten that time depending on the amount of pressure that's there. So I would guess that the manuals will probably tell you maximum pressure on most of these. And then they do have safety valve that allows it to shut off so that it's not a problem um, of, or a danger in the kitchen. Okay, and just one more question at this point from uh, Dani, who's saying, uh, if using herb ox chicken seasoning, how much do you add to 32 ounces of water? Herb chicken seasoning. Herb so that's like a base. Yeah, that's like a base mix probably. Um, uh, I always recommend you go by taste. You know, add a teaspoon, mix it up, taste it. Oh. Add another one, mix it up, taste it if you need more flavor. You can always add more, but it's harder to take it away. So uh, make sure that you just taste things uh, as you go. And, and keep in mind with some of these dishes, they'll reduce so they can intensify in flavor. And you've got to take that into consideration as well. And then this is cooled a little bit. You can see the poi. Nice. And I, I made this nice little frond cup. Uh, we get a lot of fronds on campus, so we'll, we'll get them, we'll clean them, run them through the dish machine. We make all kinds of serving utensils um, or vessels. And I made this today. Since it's a luau, we want to try to keep it looking authentic if we can. I'll put that there. Uh, in the oven earlier, I also threw in some, I mean, it's a Uwala Leaf Cafe, so I had to cook some Uwala. Uh, so we just threw some straight in the oven, uh, roasted them in just a little toaster oven for about 45 minutes. Uh, we let them cool and then we sliced them. Again, I put it on just a nice piece of frond that we uh, got from the palm trees outside today. And then here I'm serving it with some of that smoked Hawaiian salt that we made earlier today. So that sprinkled on the sweet potato as you eat it would be great. And then of course, uh, sweet roll, you have to have a nice uh, Hawaiian sweet roll uh, with your meal. And I've got the Kahlua pork here. And I'm gonna pull out a little bit of this cabbage. It could be served in this crock pot if I wanted to. This is perfectly presentable. Um, and this cooked only for about 45 minutes. And everybody's a little different. I like mine not just mush to fall apart. There's a lot of fiber and cabbage, so it will hold its shape. But uh, I tend to cut larger wedges and keep the stock so that it holds little wedges together. Um, but I don't like it totally mushy, but it's up to you. If you want it more tender or more soft, you can cook a little bit longer. I would say that if you were to put it in with your pork for the uh, hour and a half under pressure, it would probably turn to mush or close to it at least. So I'm just draining off the liquid and I just put in some of the sodium free chicken base and an onion and a, a head of cabbage. Uh, everyone, I'm sorry, I know the overhead camera is a little bit out of focus. So, um... oh, is it? I'm sorry. I'm going to ask Dan if he could just adjust it slightly. Great, thank you. Yeah, is it out of focus? I can't see it because I don't. We're not. Yeah, controlling. no, it's good now. Yeah, thank you. It's a little bit. Oh, is it? It's yeah. Much, much better. Yeah, it looks great. We don't want to miss all that great food. Is that better? Does that work? Yes, that looks great. Thank you. Sorry about and, that. And do you have a recipe for chili water? Uh, Sorry, yeah, I, I can I can post one or we can go over one uh, next week for sure. Or if you have okay. questions, if you email thanks, me, Jan. I'd be happy to send it to you. Okay, thanks for the question, Jan. That was a good one. It's pretty simple. A lot of times sugar, vinegar, water, or chilies. Uh, but it's just a question of the amount of acidity you want in there, level of sweetness you'd like. Uh, we actually put a touch of oil in this choyu one uh, for the dishes that we use it for. Uh, but that's most of the the items here and of course we've got the Kahlua pig it's starting to cool down now which is good 
So I can actually taste it. Um, the only thing I didn't make was rice. I'm sorry. Um, a nice brown rice, or, or here we mix uh, white rice and brown rice. We do a hoppa rice, so we call it that hoppa rice. Uh, equal parts brown and white. Uh, because if you can try to work whole grains into your diet, it's obviously uh, a little bit better for you, a little bit uh, more fiber. Um, and we try to encourage that as much as possible. So I don't know if there are still other questions or if Jackie's coming over to grab dinner. Um, <laughs> I wish I could live close enough to grab dinner. But I, uh, no, I've got no other questions at this particular time. Uh, Jackie, do you have any on Facebook? Um, no, there are no questions on Facebook. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, anybody, if you've got any last questions, now's the time. So, I did just want to mention there was a question um, that was that was added in about um, why don't you cut the chicken smaller? And I think you sort of answered that, but I just wanted to just chime in there that my experiences with the pressure cooker, the smaller you cut the meat when you put it in, the drier it will be at the end. So especially with chicken breast, I've had some disasters where I've tried to cut it small and then it ends up just yuck. So um, the bigger, the better I've found. Yeah, these thighs I left whole actually. Uh, and after 10 minutes they were done, I took them out, uh, cooled them quickly. I spread them out on that sheet pan. Uh, and then I just tore them by hand. But you can cut them in any shape you want. Um, I wouldn't probably serve them whole, but Jackie's exactly right. Once you go to a really lean cut of meat, like a chicken breast, where there's almost no fat, or if you were to use turkey breast, uh, you, the window of overcooking is, is about 60 seconds. And once it's gone over, there's no turning back. You can't really rehydrate uh, chicken breast and turkey breast. It stays, it stays dry, even if it's submerged in a liquid but a thigh will give you a lot more uh, leeway. Now you can remove that extra fat around the outside of the thigh, but the fat that's inside the muscle is what's gonna add that moisture and to keep it from being so dry when it's cooked. Right, and actually Doreen was just making a comment that she uses chicken thighs. So yeah. I'm assuming that she enjoys that too. Uh, Ingrid is wondering if you have a recipe for cooking taro leaf. So maybe that's something we could include in a future class. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love those. And uh, if there's no other questions, and I'm not seeing any other here, except for Ho has asked a question, are there any more sessions with Chef Dan? So fancy you asking that. I think that's a great question. So as we say, thank you very much to Chef. This was a wonderful session as always, and we sure appreciate it. And we do have more sessions coming up. In fact, lots of them. So next week's session, we'll learn about easy weeknight rice bowls. We'll talk about Korean and Mexican bowls and how to prepare them ahead so that you have easy and healthy meals throughout the week. You want to go to aarp.org slash Hawaii to register. And also while you're there, take a look at all the other great offerings we have. There are lots of them. So with that being said, um, I